everybody. I'm here to answer questions and I really appreciate you chiming in on Facebook. And uh, so I'm just going to start out with a short introduction. My name is Ted, not Tedster, but Tedster is a nice nickname. Um, part of the reason why I got that was as a result of Facebook being uh, somebody stole my identity. So now I'm Tedster and it's become quite the nickname and that's cool. I like it. And so, anyway, um, I've been with the Rush Tribute Project for about eight years. The band's been around for about 10. And I have been uh, in charge of production, so I take care of sound and lights. Um, of late, we have had uh, Aaron from Proline, who's been taking care of our lighting and doing a phenomenal job. Uh, when he's not available or if we're in a venue that doesn't have, um, you know, uh, uh, the lighting system that we need or if it's just the size then I will set up my rig and then roll from there. So anyway, so my primary is sound uh, and that's what I went to school for many years ago, about 1978. I went to school to become a recording engineer and have worked in the live world ever since. It's my love and my passion. I do other things. I'm actually a surgical nurse um, or some might say a surgical assistant. Um, so um, that's my day job, my pseudo retirement job. I'm actually retired from teaching because I used to teach surgical technologists, which are related to surgical nurses. And uh, but um, this has been my passion and my love, and love doing what I'm doing with uh, the Rush Tribute Project and with the band. We're a big family, and we all get along well. Uh, it's uh, just a just a quite the honor to be in the capacity that I'm in. So anyway, I'm gonna get right to the Q&A and try to answer as many questions as I can. By the way, when it comes to locational and uh, things like that, you know, can you guys play here or there? Keep in mind that we do have a management company that takes care of our bookings. So the band does have choices over where they, you know, can go and so on, but it's pertinent to, or at least the, the bookings um, are, uh, those are handled through the management company. So, you know, we'd love to come to Texas. We'd love to come to South Carolina and come, you know, all over the place, Seattle. Uh, and maybe someday we will. That's our hope, is to travel all over the United States. But right now, um, it's limited to, you know, what we're receiving in terms of requests. All right, so let's move on. And I'm gonna start out with um, Steve Hayer asked the question, what are you riding nowadays on two wheels? Well, uh, None of us have motorcycles. I did have a Harley for a while there, but um, have sold it because I just wasn't riding it very much. Um, mainly, I'm on three wheels on a um, recumbent trike. My wife and I are cyclists, and Sean also is a cyclist. Um, so, um, you know, most of us, like I said, if you're referring to motorcycles, we don't ride those. Um, um, let's see, someone said, can we get the boys down to Arizona, play bike week? Like I said, locationally, it all depends on what is booked. We definitely wouldn't be opposed. All right, moving on. There was a question from Tim Dunn. Hi, Tim. And he asked about getting the signal from Tom's drums to the mixing console, to the speakers, and then out to the audience. So um, without getting too technical, um, we actually have microphones on every one of our inputs, instruments, or so on. Um, and, um, or at least um, if they're not a microphone, they go direct into our system. Anyway, there's a box on stage that um, we plug right into, and that goes right back to my soundboard, which is actually handled right through an ethernet cable. It's pretty cool because we have digital technology. And at the soundboard, that's where we process all of the sound. So tone, um, whatever is needed to be able to to reproduce the sound the way that you hear it, um, that's all processed right there. And then from there it leaves the soundboard and goes out to the speakers, which have amplifiers built into them, most of them, and then um, out to you. So if we do our job, do it well, then that's pretty much what the process is. Um, one other part of Tim's question was, what do we do to reduce stage uh, volume and the Rush Tribute Project, all the members use in-ear monitors, so we don't have stage wedges or any additional sound that's um, you know, potentially cluttering up the stage, which really makes a difference in terms of what you hear, because if there's less stage sound, it's more direct sound coming out to the audience. So, thanks, Tim. Um, 
had uh, Ray, who's a friend of the band, and he's just said, uh, we miss you guys. And um, he said, how much assistance do we get from the venue when we play? Um, and then do we use our sound and lighting system? Uh, we get a lot of assistance. Uh, generally speaking, we have helpers, and that's really appreciated. The other thing is, in terms of the, the sound and lighting systems, I do have a PA system. I have my own sound company, and I will use my system if there isn't an adequate um, uh, sound and lighting um, system that's already installed in the venue. Um, most often, uh, I'd say 95% of the shows right now, we are actually using the rig right at the house. So wherever we're at, if we're at the Pabst and so on, we're using their system. We do bring in our own console, um, my own mixing console and stage box and microphones. Um, the console is pre-programmed so that way we're very consistent with what we do so that way the sound at every one of the shows that you go to sounds really you know uh, well defined and uh, you can hear Rush being played at least that's the goal. Alright next one is um, the, the rear screens um, the video screens um, someone had mentioned that they uh, Peter Bishop actually mentioned that um, he wondered where um, the uh, where the videos come from and about the rear screens. Um, Sean, um, our bass player, lead singer, and a friend of his, John, not John, our videographer, although John is involved in the process too, but they're the ones who have actually developed a lot of the videos. Um, and when you are actually at the concerts, John is actually operating things live because we have usually about seven or eight cameras. So he integrates that with the videos that have been pre-produced and, and made um, by Sean and his friend John. Um, fortunately, most places do have video screens for us, so uh, it makes it really, really nice. So um, we can just hook in our computers, and then that's where John, our videographer, he takes care of that. By the way, Eric is our drum tech, and Eric takes care of drums. So John, Eric, and I are the three production people for the band. Uh, let's see, someone had mentioned about being, I guess David Pethis had mentioned about us being in a bar um, of 20 people many years ago. Um, yeah, the RTP used to play bars in whatever venue was available, and now we've sort of graduated to larger venues, and uh, which has been wonderful. Um, he mentioned that the professionalism was very high then, and that's, you know, between the consistency in, in sound and production, and as well as the consistency of the professionalism of the band, that is part of what makes RTP, RTP. Um, we all take this very serious. We spend our time practicing, uh, rehearsing. Um, we do our legwork before the shows so that way everyone can enjoy the show. And so, um, so thank you for mentioning that. Um, someone said, I assume you guys have day jobs. Well, as I mentioned, um, I'm a surgical assistant. Uh, I only work a couple days a week and um, because I'm technically retired now. Uh, and um, Bill is a securities expert. Sean teaches computer um, engineering at a uh, college in Milwaukee. Tom is recently retired. Uh, John and Eric work uh, also in the computer industry. They could probably come up with a better description than myself. I know their jobs, but I don't know how to describe them that well. Um, and so, so we all do have day jobs, and we're fortunate that uh, we can take work with us. And so a lot of times when, if I'm driving to the show, the guys are working on their computers, they're answering phone calls. I mean, technology's great that we can do those types of things. Um, and so, um, and Sean, his, his school schedule, we, we know enough to, to schedule around things. Uh, when I was still working, um, a lot of our shows were in the summer and I taught at a college as well. And so fortunately I was able to, um, you know, I had the flexibility in my schedule. So yeah, we have day jobs, but um, you know, we've got that pretty well mastered and our schedule is pretty well fixed. So we know exactly when and where we're gonna be. Um, Let's see, favorite, our, what is our favorite um, performance location and what's the favorite RTP song? Well, favorite Rush song for me, it happened to be Analog Kid. Um, they sometimes call me Analog Ted because um, I love that song. 
Um, favorite performance location? We've had so many. There's been just so many great places. The people we've worked with, the production staff and everything, it's just really been glorious. Um, I think, you know, mentioning our professionalism, we go in as professionals, we're respectful, um, keep the egos in check, um, and um, it's wonderful. We've had great experiences at our venues. Um, let's see what we have here. Um, someone asked about coming to Cincy. Hopefully we'll be back. Are we going to play Canada? Sure, we'd love to. Um, Cindy Cox mentioned about uh, did uh, they always play Rush on when did they start or uh, did they start playing with other bands music? Well this band, the Rush Tribute Project, has been just that, been Rush. Um, but Bill has been in other bands, Sean has, and Tom. So they've all been in other bands. They came together through a, um, an event called TabCon, where a bunch of Rush fans get together and play Rush music for a weekend. And that was where they all met and started playing um, exclusively Rush. So yeah, they've all played other music. I myself have, you name it, I've worked with. I've worked with jazz bands, kids bands, classical. I've worked with theatrical things. Um, it's been pretty cool. Uh, right. Uh, let's see. Someone said time to head west. Sure. We'd love to go to Arizona or California. Um, Daniel Marino asked about, uh, there's a lot of debate about pure rock bands relying on synthesizers. ACDC never switched, uh, but Rush and Getty did. Well, if you watch some of the videos and the interviews with Alex Lifeson, Alex didn't like when Rush started integrating keyboards, but they're a progressive rock band and they progressed, I guess if you want to use that as a description or a descriptive word, they progressed to integrating keyboards. Um, by the way, Sean does play those with his feet, Bill does as well, so there's going to be, they've got, they've got MIDI triggers all over the place and about 95% of what you see is done live. Um, the band is, their, their goal is whatever Rush played live or how they played live, that's exactly how RTP would like to do it as well. Um, the backing vocals, those are re-recorded by Sean in terms of, or recorded. Um, so, you know, if you hear tracks, it's things that RTP made, 95% of it. Um, so it's not one of those things where you're listening to a band that really isn't playing on stage. That's not the case at all. Um, unbelievable that they can do four or five different things at the same time. It's wonderful. All right. Um, Let's see, uh, just kind of looking through uh, because there's more requests. Collinswood, when are we coming back to New Jersey? Only time will tell. Um, uh, Todd Quarry said, while the band gets a lot of accolades, I know um, on the technical side, um, let's see, how do you handle that? Um, you, know, you know, the band gets accolades and I may not. Um, that's not necessarily true. Um, Todd, thank you for mentioning that. Uh, I get a lot of recognition, and it's wonderful. The band recognizes me. Most of the fans come up and recognize me. People who enjoy the show, and I watch you. I watch you from the crowd, or well, from the soundboard, I watch the crowd. And if you're enjoying it, and it sounds wonderful, if it sounds great to me, and it sounds great to you, it's a win-win. So that's my accolade. Um, and someone doesn't have to say, good job, Ted. Of course, I never mind that. We all like to, to be, you know, acknowledged. Uh, but, you know, the fact that you are all enjoying the shows and things are coming together as smoothly as they typically are, that's my pride and joy right there. Um, thanks, Robert, for saying love you, Teddy. Love you, too. <laughs> um, yes, I'm a hugger. So some people have probably been like, the guy will give me a hug, you know, so and give out pins, too. And I have a couple pins that I have yet to send out. I will do that. I didn't forget. Um, certain Rush album that's your favorite to play songs from. They play everything. They play all Rush. Um, in terms of me, um, I like the old school Rush, but I like it all. It's wonderful. Um, let's see. Uh, how does a tributed band treat tribute bands? I don't know how to answer that one, but everybody treats each other with respect. It's kind of cool. It's a cool world. We have a lot of friends out there that are in tribute bands and so on, and they regard us and we regard them. Um, how did everyone find each other? I mentioned about TabCon. That's how the band found themselves, found, you know, 
you know, came together and found that they all had the mutual love and and the talent, which was really cool. Um, Rudy um, Tejeda um, had great questions here. Rudy said, what keeps you going when it comes to touring? It must be a little tiring flying, commuting, bus, buses, driving, um, and then eating. What are your eating habits like? Do you make healthy choices? Um, you know, do you go for fast food? Uh, actually, we eat pretty well. Uh, most people try not, to, we try not to eat McDonald's and a lot of munchy things. We try to eat good food and, and eat at good restaurants whenever we have an opportunity. Uh, touring is tough, but we have limits as the number of days that we'll actually do shows. So maybe three in a row will be max before we have a rest. So it's all reasonably done. Uh, our manager, Linda, keeps us on key with things and works out a lot of the details. And so we have, like I said, a really nice collaborative. Um, the band is just that, a band. Um, and we all appreciate each other. We all work well together. And so we're able to kind of, you know, take care of those things. Well, I am coming to an end here because I'm just about out of time. But I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you do from our fans, being our fans and supporting us. And if there's other questions that I didn't answer, you can, you know, personal message me, Ted Strulupella. That's me. Um, I'll answer your question. Uh, otherwise, hope to see you in 2024 or maybe even sooner. Thanks again. Take care.